in the world is happening with King County Real Estate? This is insanity, insanity, I say, madness, I say. You're looking at the uh, supply and demand graph of King County for the last five years. I wanted to go back some time uh, so you get a real sense of how mad this is because this is madness. Um, the green are the new listings, listings that came to market any given month. The blue are the number of uh, homes that came out, out off the market, went under contract. And what do you see? Where'd the green go? I mean, this is crazy. This is the peak. We have undoubtedly hit, hit the peak, okay, of the year. Summer is always the peak of inventory. And it's half. It's half of what the past peaks are. 50% less houses came to market. That's crazy during the peak. This is like the kind of number you hit in August. I mean, it's in, in October. This is crazy. Okay, now, so there's way less homes to choose from. Now, there are less buyers. This gap, this delta here, let's look at that for a second, between the number of, uh, let's just look at the, let's just look at last month. The number of people that are on the market, right? There's still more houses available than people shopping, but not a ton, not like, you know, sorry, I probably picked the wrong year. Let's just, let's go back two years. I'll show you the difference. Now it's a pandemic year last year. So it's a little bit different, but look at, you know, here's July. There's June, July. Look at that gap in available houses to inventory. In the summer, you get this, usually get this huge gap where you've got way more inventory than available houses, uh, sorry, than, than available buyers way more inventory than buyers. That's pretty typical for summer months. Not this year. You got half the inventory and that's a really tight gap, super strong seller's market. So what does that mean? It means if you price your own well, you're going to get a bunch of offers on it. The offers are going to be within a tighter range than they were. You cannot expect people to go $200,000 over asking anymore. It's not happening. Why? Because 7% interest rates prohibit that from happening. That was the idea of 7% interest rates. They're doing their job. So homes are staying within a tighter range, but you're still going to get multiple offers if you price your home right. And if you're buying, what you're looking for is someone who didn't price their home right because there are you and you've got to become way less picky. There are just not the houses to choose from. If you're looking to buy, you're going to need to get into something and hang on to it and then refi it when the rates come down a little bit and then be able to get something to move up to. But if you're looking to get into this market, this is a tough market to buy in right now and a super easy market to sell in. There's half the inventory. That's craziness. Okay. Anyway, if you're particular, you want to talk about your particular situation because everyone's situation is different. Let me know, right? You don't want to overprice in this market because people can't pay it. Uh, buyers are clearly not coming to market the way they were right? There's less buyers. So people are being pickier. If you are selling, you got to price it right. And if you're buying, loosen up those standards. Let's get you into the house. I don't know how much lower interest rates are going to go over our lifetime, right? 7% historically, not a crazy rate. You know, maybe they come down a point, 6%, 5%. I cannot see that. I don't see the scenario where interest rates ever get back to two and a half or three, unless there's another pandemic, another calamity, another world crisis, in which case all the other predictions are out the window. So if you're on the sideline waiting to buy for interest rates come down, it's a mistake. It's not likely to happen. There's a huge cost in waiting because given this kind of a deficiency, housing prices have no choice but to go up. When supply is dem down, demand is up, your, your prices are going to go up. The cost of waiting is higher than the cost of interest. So I wouldn't wait I'd get into something and then I'd start to move myself up over time. Anyway, everyone's case is different. Let me know if I can help you at all. Aaron Hendon with Christine Company over at eXp Realty with your King County market update. Party on, Wayne. Hey, what in the world is happening with Kitsap County real estate? You got to see this. This is crazy. All right. There, this is real. So first of all, you're looking at the supply and demand chart for Kitsap County last two years, 
Green are the supply. Green are the new listings. What new homes came to market that month? Blue, demand. How many homes came off the market that month? Last two years, Kitsap County. Couple things about it that are notable, as in every other county in our region, half the amount of inventory. This is a typical of this time of year. This is last month, July. This is July of the previous year. This is July of the year before that. Half the amount of inventory. Half the number of homes. 50% less homes. That's madness. That's It makes it almost in, uh, uh, just It's crazy. Okay? It makes it really hard, especially for an area that's featuring a net influx of people. This is a really difficult situation for buyers. Great situation for sellers. If you're selling, you should be in really good shape, especially because this represents the number of buyers in Kitsap compared to the number of sellers is the smallest delta, is the smallest number of any of the major counties, any of the big counties in the in the Seattle area, Kitsap, Pierce, King, Snohomish. That's the tightest gap, meaning sellers are going to get multiple offers. Sellers are going to go over asking. It should be really easy for you to get your home sold. Um, if you market it right and you get it priced right, you should be in really good shape. Uh, if you're uh, buying, you've got to deal with that there's a cost of waiting that's going, it's going to be greater than the 7% interest rate. So interest rates are about 7 as I'm recording this. They've been fluctuating between 6 and 7 all year. Um, there's no future that anyone sees where those interest rates go back to 3. Not going to happen. Maybe we get to 6, maybe high fives, maybe sometime in the next 12 months. Possible, who knows? Like that, like really, nobody knows, and there's no real prediction, no way to see it coming down. So what does it cost you to wait? Well, home appreciation is predicted to be in the double digits, low double digits, 10%, 9%, 11%, like right in that range, which means it costs more to rent, wait, like you're going to buy next year when rates come down. First of all, rates may not come down next year and you will have lost out on that home appreciation. So there's an Im immense cost, cost of waiting, cost of waiting. Hey, I'm from New York. Occasionally that'll slip out. Now I have to have my coffee. Hang on. Mm, it's good coffee. Yeah. So there's a cost of waiting involved. So if you're selling, price it right, get it to market, market it, sell it quick. You're going to get multiple offers. The offers are going to be in the tight, uh, tight range. They're not going to go all the way up like they used to skyrocket way over asking because 7%, the design of 7% is to keep that from happening. That's working. Um, but really what's needed is a mass more inventory. And it's so, cannot imagine that happening this year. I don't see the scenario where we get an, more inventory in the fall. There's no scenario that's ever happened where we got more inventory in the fall. So this is as low of an inventory as we've had since 2000. Buyer demand is as high as it can be given the amount of inventory. So if you're buying, you got to be more flexible. You got to be more interested. You got to give me a call and I'll start door knocking for you. I'll start calling on houses to see if I could find you something that fits your criteria because it's not likely to be on the MLS like this. It's just not likely. Look at it. Not going to be there. So everyone's situation is unique. You're unique. Everything is unique. Let me know about what you're dealing with. I'd love to help you with your situation and see what we can do to get you the best possible solution to whatever it is you're looking for, buying, selling, whatever it is you need. I'd love to think that through with you. Aaron Hendon with Christine and Company over at eXp Realty. I'll talk to you soon, Wayne. Bye. No, sorry. That was party on Wayne. And I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, Wayne. Doesn't really work. Party on Wayne. Bye. Hey, what in the world is happening with King, uh, King, King County? No, no, Pierce County. This is Pierce County. That's how crazy it is. I'm getting confused as to what, hang on. Let me get a drink. I got morning coffee. All right, here we go. Pierce County real estate, madness, madness. You're looking at supply and demand for the last two years, all right? That means green is the number of new listings supply. How many new listings came to market that month? Blue, demand. How many homes went under contract that month? This is the last two years. What do you see? Well, you see half as much inventory this year as last year. Half as many homes came to market. Half. That's nuts, right? You got to go back. Ready? Watch this. Let's go in the way back machine, Mr. Peabody. We're going to go way back. We're going to go back to 2008. That's as far back as we can go. Look at that. You got to go back to 2008. Sorry, 2012 to see 
as low as the, that number of homes. That's the end of the crisis before it started to turn up, except this isn't the end of something. This isn't stepping down, stepping down, stepping down. That Maybe we can turn around and start stepping up again. This is what? Bam, gone. Crazy. Ready? That's a precipitous drop. I got to use precipitous. All right. That's a big deal. And that's the same in King and Kitsap or the counties. This is pretty typical for our area. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means if you're selling, you should be able to get your home sold too sweet. If you price it right, you'll get multiple offers. Why? Because there's half as much inventory. People are out there shopping. People want a house. The, the number of buyers is down, but only by virtue of the fact that there's nothing for them to shop for. You, if you priced it right. Now, what, what you're dealing with is a 7% interest rate is doing its job by keeping prices from go exploding. People can't go 7, 8, 10, 12% over asking like they could a couple of years ago. So you're not going to get those kind. You'll get five or six offers, but the bidding will be in a very tight range, probably two, three, four, five percent. Right? Last home I sold was five percent over asking with seven offers. In the past, seven offers would be probably fifteen, twenty percent over asking. Not anymore. So if you're not getting multiple offers on your home, you're not priced right, or you're not marketing it. Not enough people are seeing it. Has to be. Why? Because there's half as much inventory. So you got to get it inside what the market will buy it for. And then you'll get multiple offers too sweet, as we said. Um, and if you're buying, you need to deal with one is there's not as much to shop for. So you've got to change your criteria. You've got to be more flexible with your criteria because there's just not that much to look at. Okay. You're not going to see it. And we've hit the peak for the year. We're not going to see more inventory come to market for the rest of the year. That's it. July is it. Maybe August pops it up. But if you go back and look, Let's just do a three-year time window. Um, you don't ever see more homes come to market after the summer in any given month. That peak here, July. That peak here, August. That peak here, August. So maybe you pop up. <coughs> that was the pandemic. So that doesn't really count. Um, you know, maybe it pops up, right? But July, August, July, August, really pretty much this is it. So... We're not getting up here. I mean, you know, maybe we get close to July. Anyway, point is there's not more inventory coming. Um, so that means you've got to be more flexible. Second thing is you also have to start dealing with the cost of waiting. Because be given this supply and demand situation, prices are going to continue to go up. Not at the 15, 20% rate they were, but at the 8, 9, 10% rate for sure. And interest rates at seven, if you think interest rates are coming down, I want you to call me. I want you to show me the evidence that you have that you're using to come to that interest rates are going to come down because uh, I don't see any. I mean, other than, the, other than the whole thing could collapse, other than everything could collapse, you know, something in Ukraine, something with the election, some massive economic turn, some black swan event has everything collapse. Fine. I got it. But that changes everything anyway. That's not interest rates coming down in the current conditions. That's a whole radical change of environment. And that could happen. I mean, black swan events happen all the time. So I'm not saying that's not going to happen. I'm just saying I don't see any evidence in the current reality that shows interest rates are likely to come down anytime soon. I just don't see it. So if you do, you should show me because I'm very interested in it. So in the meantime, if I'm right, and there is no evidence, and their interest rates are likely to do whatever they do, which is who knows, you're talking about the cost of waiting. You know, interest rates are at seven. What are they going to come down to? Six next year, five maybe? Okay, then refinance. Could they go up? They sure could. The Fed has indicated it's going to keep hiking prices. It could for sure continue to go up. So if homes are going to continue to appreciate at 8, 9, 10, 11%, and interest rates are going to creep up more likely than down, you got to deal with the cost of waiting. Bite the bullet, buy something that's not your dream house, but that you can get into and start building equity. So in a few years, if interest rates do come down, you can swap it out. Cost of waiting is a real deal, people, not, not a casual event. So if you have questions about your circumstances, because look, we're all unique. So let's, let's talk. Let's go through your stuff. Let's figure out what the best course of action for you is. It's not always the best time for people to buy, but you don't know until you look. So give me a call. So smoke signals, send me a message here, whatever you need to do. Uh, happy to talk to you. Aaron Hendon.
with Christine and company over at EXP Realty. Party on, Wayne. Hey, what in the world's happening with Snohomish County Real Estate? Check it out. This is pretty crazy. Now, if you watch any of the other updates, Pierce, K King, Kitsap, this is not radically different than that. So the predictions, the forecast, everything about it is going to be really similar. This is somewhere between Pierce and Kitsap in terms of the buyer-seller demand. What you're looking at is the uh, supply and demand chart for uh, Snohomish County. Okay, the green is the supply, number of new listings that came to market. The blue is the demand, how many came off the market that month, sort of a heat map, supply and demand of the county. So first off, half the amount of inventory is typical for this time of year. Okay, we already hit the peak in June. We're below the peak now. This is, yeah, it's about 900 and this was about 1700. Yeah, it's about half the available inventory of the peak of last year, which generally, which would really mean that's it for the year. We're not getting more houses on the market for the year. There's no history that would show an increase in inventory, more houses coming to the market in August, September, October. August is your best shot for something, but you can see we're already on the downside. Very little evidence that all of a sudden August is going to explode with inventory. So, what, you're, what this means is if you're selling, you should have a really easy time selling your home in Snohomish County. It, you should, if you price it right, you'll get multiple offers. They'll be in a tight range. They won't be like $200,000 over asking like they used to be in the pandemic because money costs 7% now. So people can't go all the way up, which is the point of 7% interest was to keep that from happening. And that's doing its job. Uh, you'll, you'll still get a lot of offers because there's no inventory. There's no supply compared to the demand. The demand is really strong in Snohomish County. So if you're selling, you should have an easy time. If you price it right, you should be able to move that house really quickly. If you are buying, you need to deal with the cost of waiting. In other words, 7% interest is higher than it's been in the last you know, few years, but there's very little evidence that it's coming down anytime soon. Housing costs, uh, housing values are going to keep appreciating. Why? Because supply and demand is a law. I mean, it's not a good idea. It's the law. If there's more demand than available supply, prices have to rise. And that is an enormous you know, pressure on pricing. So the cost of waiting, the cost of waiting is somewhere between how much is it going to appreciate, which is predicted to be around 10% this year, to what it would cost you to get in. So if you waited till next year, you would the prices would be 10% higher and interest rates are likely not to be very much lower. So there's no advantage of waiting, right? You want to start looking for that right house. Now, if you can't find it on the MLS, which is going to be likely given this chart, what this chart means, uh, you should call me and I will start door knocking. I'll call, send letters, start emailing, start uh, door knocking on houses that might fit your criteria to find someone who wants to take advantage of this market. We should hunt for someone like that can do that because they're not coming to market by themselves. So, if you're selling or buying, your situation is unique. Everyone knows that every situation is unique. So let me think it through with you. Give me a call. Let me know how I can help. I'm Aaron Hendon with Christine and Company at EXP Realty. Talk to you soon. Party on, Wayne. Bye. What in the world is happening with Vashon Real Estate? We're keeping it weird on Vashon. That's right, folks. Keeping it weird. Um, why? Because here's the chart. This is the supply and demand chart for Vashon for the last two years. Supply meaning the number of homes that came to market each month. That's the green. And then the demand, how many homes went under contract that month. That's the blue. So a couple of things you can see. So if you've watched any of the other updates prior to this, you can you know that we, as a region are about 50% less inventory than any year in, since 2012, I think is how far back I had to go to see something similar. But not on Vashon. Vashon, we're pretty close to last year. I mean, you know, we had, what is this? Come on. Come on, little guy. We had 20 homes come to market in, in July. And, you know, last year in, in July, we had 24. Okay. Not a radical shift and demands a little bit lower on Vashon compared to the available inventory. This is not the case anywhere in the anywhere in the region, right? Someone come in behind me. That was weird.
Yeah, anywhere else in the region, you don't see this. So there's more available housing on Vashon compared to buyers than any other county in the region. Keeping it weird, Vashon. Now, at the same time, 20 is a really low number. 20 is not some massive number of houses. If you go back, just let's just go back five years. We used to get to 30, 35, 40 before the pandemic. This is really typical. You know, this is really very typical, the pandemic years, which is unusual. Everyone else is l- l- way lower. This is like crazy. So this is like the same, but we're not getting to these numbers anymore, which is really where we need to get to get some kind of normalcy in the housing. So um, there are more houses coming to market on Bashan. So if you're selling, then, you know, you need to price it right. You're, you just need to really pay attention to the square footage and the condition of the house and what's happening and the price point of the house. You know, there's very few houses under 500,000. There's none under 500,000 and very few under six. Sort of that's the bottom, the bottom of the market has risen considerably on Bashan. You know, so you, get, you can't just get anything you want for the house. You got to be careful about that. But at the lower end, you have a little bit more leeway about that. Um, but you price it right. You should get multiple offers. Uh, still, still really strong seller's market. And if you're looking to buy, you know, it really depends on your price point and really depends on where you are. And everything on Bashan is a little bit, well, it's weird. It's unique. You know, waterfront, north end, south end, Maury Island, everything has a different price point. Everything has a different way of dealing with the market. So if you're looking to buy or sell on Bashan, it really is a unique situation. It's a weird situation. You know, for the future, you know, if you're selling, price it right. You should have no problem getting that thing sold. If you're buying, I would jump on anything in your price point as soon as possible. But it's also not as dire of a situation as it is in the surrounding counties. Okay. It's only more dire because there's so much less inventory. It's such a tight, such a smaller market. You know, there's just way less of everything, right? But, you know, if you want to live on Bashan, that's why you want to live here is because it's way smaller. Uh, every situation is different. So we want to, you, you want to talk through and look at the best scenario for each situation. That's what I do. That's what I'm here for. Uh, give me a call anytime. That's what I do for a living. I talk to people about these kinds of things. So let me know how I can help you. Okay. Aaron Hendon with Christine Company over at eXp Realty. Party on Wayne. Talk to you soon.